We came from, um, from Czechoslovakia when I was four, and we left East Germany to West Germany when I was 11. So it is really within those few years that we lost everything twice. I remember uh, walking by the uh, places where the Russian army was cooking for their soldiers, and they were throwing out the garbage into big garbage cans. And I, I saw there through the fence, I saw things where I, I would have loved to have, you know, which they threw away. We came over the green border. My, my sister went uh, on a train, and this train had the doors locked because it had to go through the West Germany for, for a short trip. And, and my sister, plus I think three other girls, they, they paid a, the conductor to open the door and, uh, while it was going through the West German part, and they jumped off then into West Germany. And my brother went on a different route, and my other brother went on a different route, and my dad went on a different route. So we all then in West Germany met again together, but we had nothing. This little house there, that's where we, that was our first place. That's where we went in and uh, started, and it was very, very humble. But it, we had a, a roof over our head, and uh, I went to school. And, and of course, for the people there, it was difficult because all of a sudden came all these Germans from East Germany and and looked for places and and were there, you see. So it there was a disruption of the normal life, and so they had names again for for all those who came. What I kind of took out of this is never label any people. If you look at in Europe. Our members try to help wherever they are. And I think that's what the church wants to do. We don't want to, to focus all our efforts on one single refugee activity. We want to use our talents we, which we have as a church to bless the lives of individuals through all faces as a family, as individuals, in seeking uh, to become self-reliant, to help them to learn to help themselves. Around the globe, that's what we do. And we will continue to do it because it is something as a church we can do wherever we are, and we should do this wherever we are around the globe. I hope you liked that first video of President Elder Rukdorf talking about his life as a refugee. And then, refugee, he was born in Germany. And he, they didn't move on a lot because of World War II. This next video is, is these no, next two videos, so I'm going to talk about more of his experience. <laughs> Toward the end of World War II, my mother decided to flee to Germany where her parents were living. Though I was only three years old, I can still remember this time of fear and hunger. Along the way, the train stopped occasionally to get supplies. One night, during one of these stops, my mother hurried out of the train to search for some food for her four children.
I know with certainty her faith overcame her fear and her hope overcame her despair. I grew up in Zwickau, in the former East Germany. When I was about 11 years old, my father fell under increased scrutiny as a political dissenter, and my parents felt that the only safe choice for our family would be to flee to West Germany. It was decided that the best plan was to leave at different times and follow different routes to the West, leaving all our belongings behind. I was the youngest child, and my mother decided that she and I would walk across a mountain range separating the two countries. I remember that she packed a lunch as if we were going for a hike or a picnic in the mountains. We took a train as far as we could and then walked for long hours, getting ever closer to the West German border. I could sense my mother's anxiety. She observed the area intensely to see if we were being followed. With each step, her legs and knees seemed to become weaker. I helped carry her heavy bag filled with food, vital documents and family photos as we climbed up one last long hill. Surely, she thought, we had passed the border by now. When she finally felt safe, we sat down and started to eat our picnic lunch. For the first time that day, I'm sure she breathed more easily. It was only then that we noticed the border sign. It was still far ahead of us. We were having our picnic on the wrong side of the border. We were still in East Germany. Border guards could show up any moment. My mother frantically packed up our lunch, and we hurried up the hillside as quickly as we could. This time, we didn't dare stop until we knew with certainty that we had reached the other side of the border. My dear friends, I believe that every life is a collection of individual journey stories. It might be wise to ask yourself how your journey is going. Are you on the right course? Are you becoming the person you were designed to be and wanted to become? Are you making choices that will help you to return to your Father in Heaven? Dear young friends, God didn't send you on this journey only to wander aimlessly on your own. He wants you to come home to Him. He has given you loving parents and faithful church leaders, along with a map that describes the terrain and identifies the dangers. The map shows you where peace and happiness can be found and will help you to plot your course back to your heavenly home. As you joyfully use the gospel plan your loving Father has provided for your journey through life, it will lead you to holy places and will help you to rise to your divine potential. Okay, hopefully those give you some insight on his life a little bit. But he, um, is from Germany. He was born to Carl Albert and Hilga, Hilgard, Hilga, um, sorry, I don't want to speak German. In 1940, in 1947, when he was seven years old, because, you know, 40, 47, seven, yeah. Anyway, uh, he spent became members of the church in Zinkawa, Z W I C K A W. And I get earlier we learned that because of World War Two, 
They fought the bleed the round up. But in 1959, he he got into engineering, and he became an Air Force pilot. Now I think I'm going to add a little a video of him talking about his love story, about how he met his wife, and then the video after that one would talk about more of their love story. This will be two separate videos talking of him talking about his love story. This truth is illustrated in the experience of two young missionaries serving in Europe, in an area where there were few convert baptisms. I suppose it would have been understandable for them to think that what they did wouldn't make much of a difference at all. But these two missionaries had faith, and they were committed. They were committed to work. They had the attitude that if no one listened to their message, it would not be because they had not given their best effort. One day, they had the feeling to approach the residents of the well-kept four-story apartment building. They started on the first floor and knocked on each door, presenting their saving message of Jesus Christ and the restoration of his church. No one on the first floor would listen to them. How easy it would have been to say, we tried, Let's stop right here. Let's go and try another building. But these two missionaries had faith, and they were willing to work. And so they knocked on every door on the second floor. Again, no one would listen. The third floor was the same, and so was the fourth. That is, until they knocked on the last door of the fourth floor. When that door opened, a young girl smiled at them and asked them to wait while she spoke with her mother. Her mother was only 36 years old, had recently lost her husband, and she was in no mood to talk with Mormon missionaries. So he told her daughter to send them away. But the daughter pleaded with her. These young men were so nice, she said. <laughs> and it would only take a few minutes. So reluctantly, the mother agreed. The missionaries delivered their message and handed a book to the mother to read, the Book of Mormon. After they left, the mother decided she would at least read a few pages. Well, she finished the entire book within a few days. Not long after, this wonderful single-parent family entered the waters of baptism, when the small family attended their local branch in Frankfurt, Germany. A young deacon noticed the beauty of one of the daughters and thought to himself, these missionaries are doing a great job. <laughs> well, that young deacon's name was Dieter Uchtdorf. <laughs> and the charming young woman, the one who had pleaded with her mother to listen to the missionaries, has the beautiful name of Harriet. She is loved by all who meet her as she accompanies me in my travels. She has blessed the lives of many people through her love for the gospel and her sparkling personality. She truly is the sunshine of my life. I share with you a personal experience I had as a teenager while our family was attending church in Frankfurt, Germany. One Sunday, the missionaries brought a new family to our meetings who I hadn't seen before. It was a mother with two beautiful daughters. I thought that these missionaries were doing a very, very good job. <laughs> I particularly 
took notice of the one daughter with gorgeous dark hair and large brown eyes. Well, her name was Harriet. And I think I fell in love with her from the first moment I saw her. Unfortunately, this beautiful young woman didn't seem to feel the same about me. <laughs> she had many young men who wanted to make her acquaintance, and I began to wonder if she would ever see me as anything but a friend. But I did not let this deter me. I figured out ways to, bear, to be where she was. When I passed the sacrament, I made sure I was in the right position so that I would pass <laughs> the sacrament to her. When we had special activities at church, I rode my bike to Harriet's house and rang the doorbell. Harriet's mother usually answered. In fact, she opened the kitchen window of their apartment on the fourth floor and asked what I wanted. I would ask if Harriet would like a ride to church on my bicycle. <laughs> Harriet's mother would say, no, she will be coming later, but I will be happy to ride with you to church. <laughs> this wasn't exactly what I had in mind. But how could I decline? And so we rode to church. I must admit, I had a very impressive road bike. Harriet's mother sat on the top tube bar just in front of me. <laughs> and I tried to be the most elegant bicycle driver over roads of rough cobblestone. Time passed. While beautiful Harriet was seeing many other young men, it seemed that I could not make any headway with her. Was I disappointed? Yes. Was I defeated? Absolutely not. <laughs> Actually, looking back, I recognize that it doesn't hurt at all to be on good terms with the mother of the girl of your dreams. Years later, after I had finished my training as a fighter pilot in the Air Force, I experienced a modern miracle in Harriet's, re Harriet's response to my continued courting. One day she said, Dieter, you have matured much over these past years. I thought I was mature all the time. But then I moved quickly after that, and within a few months, I was married to the woman I had loved ever since I first saw her. The process hadn't been easy. There were moments of suffering and despair, but finally, my happiness was full, and it still is even more so. But after he came back from more of the war, he he finally, as the video said, won over Harriet's heart and got they were married. They have two children, and I don't I couldn't find I could not figure out how many grandchildren he had. They have and I had half. But in 1965, he started for the German Airlines. And from 1970 to 1996, he flew as a captain for those airlines. And if I remember right, 96 is where he became part of the 70. He was like 04 or 05, but he was called member of the 12. In 2008, he was called to be the first counselor to the first presidency for President Monson. And because President Monson passed away, he went back in the 12. And President Nelson gets to pick his counselors. But why he was, but yeah, he, there's more, more and more I can go on, but this video, I don't want to make this very long. But I hope I have learned a lot about him through these doing what this research on him. And I hope that you will too. And will join me on my next episode. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.